husband does. Normally I don't need to step up, but Stuart, my husband, did give me a little hand. Thank you, Stuart. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for coming today. What a great turnout. Um, I'm really thrilled that you took time to come here about your university and what we're doing. I want to first acknowledge a few people that are here today. Uh, Patrick Mays is representing our Board of Governors. Um, the City Councilor, Mike Kajiri, a wonderful friend of our university. It's wonderful to see you here. All my University of Regina colleagues that are here, your support is greatly appreciated. I also want to acknowledge a few other friends of, our of your university. Chris Decker here from Global Transportation. Where's Chris? There he is. Um, we also have Steve McCollin, who is here from the SAS Chamber of Commerce. Great friend of the University of Regina. It's great to see you, Steve. Uh, Bernadette McIntyre is also with the Wisconsin Authority. Where's Bernadette? She's there. Um, Bonnie Liskitz is our provincial auditor. Wonderful to see you here. I think I got most of our wonderful guests that have come. So today, I, I, before I start, I also want to acknowledge one of your own and one of our own, Victor Thomas, the former chair, your former chair. He's being honored this month with the University of Regina Alumni Crowning Achievement Award for Outstanding Service. And I hope many of you will come and join us to celebrate our alumni on September 27th. Now, our university motto is this one who serves, and he really represents that. So it's an exciting time to be in Saskatchewan. Exciting time for me. When I first took the job here at the University of Regina, I had many of my colleagues say, you're leaving Prince Edward Island, you're going to Regina? <laughs> now they say to me when they see me, what a great time to be in Saskatchewan. <laughs> now the first year I was here, when I went back for a few, I had to go back for a few events, I said, you know, people in Regina and Saskatchewan, they walk with a spring in their step. And that's what I've seen and what I believe our population is growing. Unemployment historically low is great momentum in our province and enthusiasm. Great time to be in Regina, our city. We're setting records for building. Our own population is growing. Money Says Magazine earlier this year ranked Regina as one of the top five places to live in Canada. I tell everybody that. <laughs> and, I, and I live and breathe that. I believe this is one of the most wonderful cities to, to be a part of, and I'm proud to be here. Um, I'll give it another great example. On September 1st was move-in day in residence for new students. My husband and I and our senior team, we helped move in over 600 brand new to Regina students from Manitoba, from Alberta, from Ontario, from Finland, from many places around the world. And we saw their enthusiasm for our university and our city, and we were inspired. The moms and dads, grandmas, Boyfriends, girlfriends, brothers, sisters, cousins. I remember my move-in day. My mother said, I hope you have a ride. And that was it. <laughs> that, that's what happened. So when I think of the students of moving day, and I think of how proud I am to have them be part of our university community, um, I also think about how universities are key to our future. And I would argue that University of Regina is one of the great things about this city and has helped fuel that growth. The University of Regina is going, uh, is at a, at a pinnacle. It has tremendous growth right now. We have had enrollment growth four years in a row. This year was the highest total in our history. And that includes our federated college. We have a new nursing faculty, our second year in, in offering nursing, over tw around 1,200 applications for 350 spots. Doing very, very well. Uh, we are a provincial university. Our applications from outside Regina have been up 16% year after year in the last three years, I think. So we're really, really drawing in from the province. There's more positive signs, international education. We have international agreements from all over the world, have opened a Confucius Institute. Our, about 10% of our students are international, but when we look at our ESL, we have 1,700 international students at the University of Regina. Your sons, your daughters, your nieces, your nephews, your grandchildren, they're able to get an international education in our backyard. And as president of your university, I'm really proud of that. In terms of Aboriginal education, that's been a priority for us at the University of Regina. Our Aboriginal self-declared students are up 16% this year. We have 10% approximately of our student population that are self-declared Aboriginal. I mean, there's many more that haven't self-declared. That's the highest in the country next to University of Winnipeg. And they're around the same. 
So we have the highest percentage of Aboriginal students in the country attending our university. And we're, we're working hard to ensure that, that they have a, possible, a positive experience. We have more satisfied students. In a national uh, survey, it shows that 89% of our students are satisfied, or more than satisfied, with the quality of our teaching. And that 95%, if they had to make the decision again, they wouldn't attend the University of Regina. 95%. I'm really proud of that number. I think it's a great number. I think it is a great number. It's a testament to several things, but I want to acknowledge one of the most important things, the quality of our faculty and our staff, the relevance of our programming, the U UR Guarantee Program, which is one of a kind in Canada, our co-op placement placed over 800 students last year in co-op placements. And they earned more than $9 million last year that they could apply to their schooling. If a student does co-op at the University of Regina, they can graduate without student debt, and the co-op earning will pay for their university <coughs> education. More than 90% of our co-op students are placed in the province, but I'm just as proud to say 10% are placed outside the province, because it's really important. But, you know, sometimes I can sing our praises, I can say we're wonderful, I can say we're doing great things, but it's really important to get an objective, third-person perspective. So we worked with the Conference Board of Canada to get a study to really say, is the evidence we have true evidence? And I want to acknowledge Diana McKay here from the Conference Board of Canada, who was instrumental in doing this study. The study that we're launching today is looking at the university's position in the context of Saskatchewan growth. Just think about a university of over 13,000 students not being part of Regina. We're a city within a city. That the town right, that my parents live in is less than 10,000 people in the Maritimes. We are a city within a city. Think about the impact that would have on your families, on your community if you weren't. So the report called fueling the surge to the University of Regina's role in Saskatchewan's growth, it gives us an idea of what the Conference Board of Canada thinks of us and in terms of economic, social, and cultural aspects and how we are a driver in the province and beyond and the vital role we play in the economic engine of Saskatchewan. So I'm curious about the impact on employment. We've got great, great employment stats. What role did the University of Regina play on that? We employ approximately 4,000 people. Uh, the Conference Board of Canada compared that to SAS Power and Chemical. That includes faculty, staff, and others. But what I thought was really interesting is that the University of Regina also supports close to 1,000 jobs that are outside the university. So having the students and the faculty and the staff and the visitors here generates another 1,000 jobs in our community. So in total supports more than 4,500 jobs in the province. And, on top of that, another 570 jobs outside the province. The graduates are meeting approximately 34% of the province's university-educated workforce. Taxation impact. Our employees remit close to 40 million in payroll taxes annually. For future employment, last year we had 2,200 graduates from the University of Regina, and they have a lower employment rate than many other groups. Our graduates, but 97% get employment right away within six months. But they earn an average of 27,600 more per year than diplomas below the bachelor's level. Now my father was a coal miner, was a coal miner and an iron ore miner. He didn't finish high school. My father went to work at 17 years old. Um, his father had died and he was needed to support the family. My mother was a high school graduate, but did not take the opportunity to go on to university. She did get a scholarship for Teachers College in Truro, Nova Scotia. She was from Cape Breton, and was going to accept it, but overheard her father, who was a coal miner, an immigrant from uh, um, Italy, and her mother, who was a stay-at-home mom, uh, talk about the cost, even though she had a scholarship to them, and how could they afford her to go. And when she came down those steps, she told them she was going to go to work and not go to university. My mom and dad had six kids, eight years from the oldest to the youngest. And my dad, before he passed away, said 
that he was so proud because he had 15 degrees among all his children, all of his university graduates. A pretty powerful statement. My father, a minor, without a high school education, recognized the value of university education. And if I told him that I would earn $1.1 million more in my lifetime because I had a university education, he would multiply that by six. <laughs> and he would be so proud of his millionaire family in so many ways. That's the power of our university education. It's really important that we think about that. Not only does it have the power to increase our earning potential, but our quality of life. You want to, you want to deal with health care costs? Educate your population. And look at the correlation between an educated population and their health. And you can see it's a very, very positive one. Future tax implications. If we project 40 years out, our graduates will pay about $320 million in, in additional income tax to this province. That's a big economic impact going forward. Now, there are many students from outside Regina that come here. And if we look at the additional student spending by the students that come, $45 million from students, $45 million spent by students outside Regina in our city. In our city. And by students outside the province, they spend in our city about $30 million a year. So just from outside Regina, the students we draw in spend $70 million a year. No wonder we generate almost 1,000 jobs through our visitors, or through our students. But then they have the visitors that come to campus. When I am standing there serving muffins to all the moms and dads, grandma and granddads that are here, my husband is unloading the fridges and the TVs that they bring, they spend a year, visitors to the University of Regina, $8.4 million a year. Almost $620,000 is spent at convocation alone by visitors to our campus. Pretty impressive numbers. We have two convocations the following winter, so you can double that in many ways. So the, the value-added impact of the University of, of Regina represents 4% of Regina's GDP. 4% generates $291 million in provincial GDP and $320 million in national GDP. Diana, you did a great job in reinforcing everything I knew but didn't have the numbers for in Regina. We are your university, but we're also a provincial university. We work through the seven regional colleges all through the province. One interesting statistic I was blown away by that was given to me last week is that our online, our online courses and our televised courses, we've had a 25% increase in enrollments. So we have 2,000 students, 2,000 that take that sign up for online or televised program courses, and now we have 2,500 this year. Talk about efficiencies. You also have a very lean, efficient university. We have many partnerships with SIAS, 110 agreements to ensure that your children in this city, in this province, have a seamless education between SIAS and the University of Regina. They, it's seamless. Those agreements mean that the students, when they enroll in SIAS, have a seamless transition to our university. Great, great stories. International. International is very close to my heart. You heard in the introduction that John gave that I work really hard on international education and to promote it. I think every student should have an international experience as part of their education, and we invest in that as a university. Any student who does an international experience will get a $1,000 grant from us as a university. And, and I think it's critical. We have partnerships with 90 institutions. We have students from over 60 countries at the University of Regina. We have 800 students from China alone. You know, in 1979, Lloyd Barber was a visionary. He, when China opened the door, the door, their doors, was the first university to sign an agreement with a Chinese university. He also signed an agreement with the government of China, the, the People's National Congress of China. And he gave visiting scholarships to, to the foreign affairs borough there that, edu that educate all of the, the foreign affairs diplomats and staff to be able to come to the University of China. When I was in China in May, we had an alumni event for all of the staff that worked in the Foreign Affairs Department. 
And the director told me that 20% of his staff were University of Virginia graduates. 20% of, of the Foreign Affairs Department in Beijing of the People's National Congress are University of Virginia graduates. That's an amazing statistic, and one we all should be proud of, because it's a legacy that Lloyd Barber left us in terms of his visionary work. So th those partnerships mean a lot. More than 80% of our graduates that are international apply to stay in Regina and Saskatchewan. You want an immigration policy? We are your immigration policy. You have a talent challenge? We are your talent solution. The University of Regina, can you imagine of my 1,700 international students, 80% of the graduating class want to stay here in Regina. Research and innovation. Innovation Place at the University of Regina generates $375 million in economic activity for the province of Saskatchewan. I see Susan Gorgeous is here. She knows that through Springboard. Our university researchers attract $24 million in research grants annually. That money pays for students, pays for staff, pays for equipment, but it is. It, it, that money goes in to this community. That helps support 18 research institutes and 50 labs that we have. We hold 90 pat patents as a university. Now I can give you that economic story over and over and over again, and the report we put, I think, some fact sheets on your tables will tell you that over and over again. But it's not just about the economic impact, though that's important. The University of Regina, based on the Conference Board of Canada report, also said it's a significant cont contributor to culture and community. Well, that's important to me as a university president. I want to ensure that we do contribute. I'm going to quote from the report. The university provides crucial support for Saskatchewan's arts and culture industries and helps promote Saskatchewan's rich cultural heritage. Many of you know I'm working very hard to try to revitalize College Avenue campus that holds our conservatory, a conservatory that teaches music to your children, your neighbor's children, the youngest student there is three, the oldest is 94. That's the university I want to be part of. Imagine we have a thousand seniors who attend the University of Regina Seniors Program. A thousand. So if, I always say, if we could calculate that into healthcare savings. They get up, they get dressed, they get out of the house, they come and they learn together, they socialize together, and they, they really spend that time. That, that is preventative medicine. That's an important part of our community, a thousand seniors we serve. So some key things we do, we regularly host music, theater, film, and arts events. We contribute to the local and provincial knowledge sharing through public lectures, conferences, and we just look at the conference monies that we bring in to, to this community, it would be significant. We also help further the educational outcomes of Saskatchewan's First Nations and Métis people. And that was a real objective of our strategic plan called Mama Waka Machuan, which is a Cree word that means working together towards a common goal. We hope that we want to invest eight, 11 million in Dark Hall, and we know that, that, that if we can transform College Avenue, we will even generate more money. College Avenue campus for itself costs $9 million to run. We generate revenues up to $13 million from just the activities at College Avenue campus. I need to revitalize that campus so that I can even contribute more back to our community. So I can go on and on about what we do and how we serve, but in closing, I want to say your university, and it is your university. The University of Regina is having a huge impact on our province and our city more than ever before. And I know that for my father and my mother, the investment in university for them was a worthwhile investment. We're hearing now about the cost of student debt. Well, I had student loans, as did all my five brothers and sisters. And if you ask any of us if we regret ever going to university, all, without exception, would say no. But I have met many people in my life who regretted not going to university. It's a great time to be in Saskatchewan. It's a fabulous time to be in Regina. It is even more wonderful to be the president of your university, the University of Regina. But I need your help. Your university needs investment. We need to take everything I've told you and even 
produce more for you and for this province and this community. So at a time when our province and our city are growing, consider the evidence I presented. Consider the evidence from the Conference Board of Canada report. How post-secondary education at your university helps drive that growth. And please be our advocates because your university is key, I believe, key to the continued economic growth of this city and this province. Thank you. Achievement Award, is that 27? Yeah. Can you speak about? The, well, the, the profits or the monies, if there's any, um, is actually, I don't think, set up as a money making endeavor more as a celebration, but it would go to our alumni association to help keep our 60,000 alumni connected to our university. So that's where any of the profits would go. No, correct me if I'm wrong, I probably am. I'm usually wrong on a lot of things, but do you don't have a fundraising night coming up? We have the President's Scout coming up, and that's a fundraiser for our College Avenue <laughs> campus. And it's a, I want you dressing up, putting on the tux, the nice evening dresses. We're going to have fun on that evening. It, it is a fundraiser, but it's also, again, building awareness of our whole College <coughs> Avenue initiative and what we want to do. And, and, and all of the programs that we offer through that will be enhanced through anything we do. It's also the conservatory's 100th anniversary. I don't know how many of you took music lessons or have children or cousins or nephews who have taken music lessons at the conservatory. A number of you have. I'd love to have seen more of you put your hand up. But you might not be a very musical bunch. <laughs> but, you know, it, I watched my daughter carry her tuba up those stairs for tuba lessons, and she was a little bit of a thing. We're on the top floor of uh, College Avenue, no elevator. And she carried that, well, first couple times, Stuart, my husband, carried that, but then he got tired of it and told her she wanted it, less, and she'd carry her own tuba. And she carried, dragged that up to those, those stairs, and every time I saw her, my heart broke a little bit and thought, you know, we have to do something with this magnificent educational facility. No more questions? That's all I have. Any questions? Will you help me? Will you look at the report? Will you please take a look at how we impact and be our advocates in your community, uh, in our community. I love our university and I hope you do too. And we, we just keep continue, I think, getting better and better. And that's because of the amazing faculty and staff that work so hard to educate the future of Regina and Saskatchewan. send us the report, we'll, add, we'll post it on our website so our members would have access to the report, so we'll do that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do is let you know that uh, the moderator for the mayor's debate 